Welcome back to part two of the two-part Rubik's Cube tutorial from Nine Between. And in this tutorial, we'll be going over how to add dynamics to the cube that we created in part one. So we'll be using a few solvers and a pop network. And what we'll be doing is firstly giving our cube dynamics, and we'll be using a rigid body solver for that. We'll then be going over how to instance confetti. So we'll be using a pop network, and we'll shoot points off of the high velocity areas of the cube. We'll use those points that are being instanced to actually emit some confetti and that will be passed into a bullet solver and that will be dynamic. We can then combine the two effects and end up with the completed Rubik's Cube. Hope you enjoy. Back in Houdini we can continue from where we left off, dive back inside of our cube geometry node and let's just make sure we have the same settings in our solver. So I found that a duration of 5 and a pause duration of 4 works quite well for this effect, so that's what I'll be using. So you may remember from our previous tutorial that we have this input range and our output range, and that's when the cube stops solving. However, the cube starts solving immediately, and it would be great to have a bit of a pause before it starts. So to do that, we can drop down a time shift node. Plug that in between our solver and our time warp, and we'll change a few settings. We'll go down to this clamp, and we'll say clamp to last. Right click on the start or end frame and say delete channels. And over here, we'll put 124 frames. Now if you play this back, this cube will shuffle itself until 124 frames have passed. So now we can take this start or end frame here. So take our end frame, say copy parameter, and let's go on to our time warp. And in our input range, we'll remove this and say paste relative references. So now we're fetching the range from our time shift, so the end frame, which is 124, and plugging it into our input range. And what we'd like to do here is just say plus 30. So we have this channel reference, plus 30. Now, when we play this back, you'll notice a pause of 30 frames before this starts moving. So that's great, we now have a pause of 30 frames and we can make use of that. So let's go down to our attribute promote and before we actually begin on dynamics, let's just set up one more thing. So in this attribute wrangle, we'll just say at speed equals length v at v. So to explain what this is doing, we're making a new billable attribute and we're giving it a value of length of our velocity. Now the length function takes each component of a vector, so the x, y, and z component, puts it to the power of each component, adds those three together, and then finds the square root. So it's the magnitude of a vector that is being found. And over here, because velocity is sometimes negative, we've been given a positive value. So that's perfect because now we know how fast each of these cubes are rotating. So if we bring up our parameter spreadsheet and go over to S, we'll find speed over here. So these parts that are moving now have this speed attribute. What we can do now is we can drop down a group expression, plug this into the first input of our group expression node. We'll change our group type to points rename this to emit underscore grp or emission group and let's type in our vex expression at speed greater than one we don't put a semicolon here and now what we'll notice is points that are moving are now being grouped so we have this group of points that have velocities on them so the next thing we'll do is just drop down a null because we are now done with the cube geometry. We'll call this cube underscore out, jump up, and let's begin creating a dot network. And let's rename this dot network to cube underscore dynamics. We'll dive inside of this and drop a couple of things. Firstly, we'll drop a rigid body solver. Plug this rigid body solver into our output, and then we'll drop down an RBD object. Plug this into the first input of our rigid body solver, 
and then the last few things will merge in a ground plane. Swap our inputs around and we'll move this ground plane down on the y-axis, minus one. Last thing, we'll just drop a gravity force over here and then we can bring in our RBD object. So over here on the soft path, let's change this. We'll go over to our cube and find our cube underscore out and accept. We'll be using deforming geometry and object transform. And let's inherit velocity from point velocity. Let's just rename our RBD object to cube. And we can play this back. And what you'll notice is this cube isn't actually flipping. It's just bouncing around. And the reason for that is because these points are moving too fast for our rigid body solver to pick up. So what we need to do is we need to increase the substeps. So push our substeps up on our rigid body solver under the bullet tab to 60. Play this back. And now we have a cube that flips around. So now that we have working dynamics, we can go ahead and jump up. And let's create another geometry node. Let's rename this node to confetti. We can hide our cube dynamics dot network and our cube geometry. Dive inside of this confetti node. And let's drop down a dot import. So the network that we would like to fetch is our cube dynamics node. And the object mask, we had it called cube. Now we need to import it. So the import style will change to fetch geometry from dot network. And there you go, there's your cube with all of its dynamics. Next, we can drop down a delete node, plug our dot import into our delete node, and we'll just change this entity type to points. And the group that we'll be deleting is our emit group. We'll delete everything except our emit group. And now we have the parts that have velocity on them. The next thing we'll do is we'll drop down an attribute wrangle. And we'll say if at cd equals equals, then in brackets, 0, 0, 0, then do the following. And we'll just say remove point 0, comma, at pt num. And what that will do is it'll remove all of the black faces. Because when we're emitting confetti, we'd like them to only have these colors and not the edge colors. So now that we have this, we can drop down our pop network. Plug this into the first input of your pop net, and let's dive inside of this pop network. So on here, the first thing that we would like to do is reduce the life expectancy of our points. So we'll set this to 0.25. And on our source, we'll be using the scatter onto surfaces. So to control how many points we'll be emitting, we can drop our constant activation and constant birth rate to zero and change our impulse count to 25. If you play this back, you'll notice that we're emitting these points. And they may be surviving for too long, so we'll drop the life expectancy to 0.05. Play this back. And there we go. We have these points that are being emitted. So we can jump up. And next, we'll drop down a copy to points node. So into the second input, we'll plug our point. And over here, we'll start creating some confetti geometry. So I'll drop down a grid and we'll change it to a three by six with two rows and two columns. We'll drop down a subdivide node. And then we'll drop down a poly extrude. So the distance we'll set to 0 0.1 and we'll output a back face and then copy this to our points. And as you can see, they're massive at the moment. So what we'll do is we'll drop down an attribute wrangle between our pop net and our copy to points. And in here, we'll just define a P scale. We'll say at P scale equals 0 0.03. And that looks like a decent size. 
So now we have these points being emitted. So the next thing that we'll do is we will assemble them. And we'll say create packed geometry. We'll transfer all attributes. Then we can go ahead and drop down a null. Plug your assemble into the null. And this will be our confetti underscore emitter. And before we jump up, let's do one thing. And let's drop down another null and take our doc import and plug it into this null node. We'll call this cube collider out. And then we can jump up and drop down another doc network. Once again, we can hide our confetti, rename this dot network to confetti dynamics, dive inside, and let's drop a few things. First thing is a bullet solver, and then an RBD packed object. However, we'll be using two solvers actually, so we're going to be dropping a multiple solver. The way this works is we plug our RBD packed object into the first input, our bullet solver into the second input, and we'll get back to this and add our second solver into this shortly. But let's just continue setting our scene up. So we'll drop down a gravity force and a merge node. Let's merge in a ground plane, plug this into our merge node and swap the inputs around. This ground plane will drop its position by minus one. Drop another merge node. And we also want our confetti to interact with our cube. So let's bring our cube in. So we'll say static object, plug that into our merge node. Go find the soft path. And that would be our cube collider out. So now we have our cube collider over here. We can just go make sure that its collisions are accurate. We'll just increase these uniform collisions up to 50. There we go. We can hide this collision guide. And let's go to our soft path on our RBD packed object and go find our confetti out. And that would be in our confetti node under confetti emitter. So we could try playing this back and nothing's happening. Now, the reason for that is because we don't actually have anything for the first 30 frames. And this RBD packed object isn't continuously looking for things being added to the soft path. So what we need to do is we need to tell it that we have geometry that's being added every frame. So let's drop down a sub solver, plug this into the second input over here with our bullet RBD solver, dive inside of this, and we'll bring in an object merge. Then we'll also bring in a merge node. Firstly, take your dot import. So this is the current geometry that's within your network and plug into your second input, this object merge. Now this object merge will be fetching the confetti geometry every single frame. So we can say confetti emitter. Set your display flag on your merge node, jump up. And now when we play this back, we're emitting confetti every frame. So you'll notice that our confetti is actually getting stuck in midair. And the reason for that is inside of our confetti geometry node. So dive inside of that and then dive inside of the pop net. And over here, our life expectancy, we actually need to change this to 0 0.01. 0 0.05 actually keeps our particles alive for too long, so we end up emitting them more than once per frame. So go back into your Confetti Dynamics tab. And the other thing that we forgot to do is on our static object, just use Deforming Geometry. The last thing to do is just make our Confetti a bit lighter. So to do that, we'll fake it by dropping our Gravity Force to minus five and we can play this back and now we have confetti being shot about and over here on this convex hull tab on your rbd packed object under the bullet data tab we have our collision padding and our shrink collision geometry and the one thing that you'll notice is that particles or pieces of confetti that land on the ground actually stick away from the surface and the reason for that is because our collision geometry is too big. So we can display our geometry, and you'll notice that 
it forms these boxes around each of our pieces of confetti. So the way to fix that is actually just to drop this collision padding to 0.001 and remove the shrink collision geometry. If we go back to the start and play this again, you can now see our confetti has thinner colliders. And so that's far more accurate. We can just hide our collider again and play that back. So now that we have that all working, we can bring this all together. So let's rename our RVD packed object because we'll need to be referencing it. We'll just call it confetti. Jump up a level, drop down a geometry node. We'll call this one final. Dive inside, delete this file node, and we can drop down a dot import node. We'll be calling in our confetti, so let's go to our confetti dynamics and use that as the dot network. And what we'll be bringing in is just our confetti that we just named. We'll be fetching geometry from the dot import, and then we'll drop down an object merge. So this object merge, we'll be bringing in our cube collider out from our confetti tab. We can just merge these two together. And on this dot import, we'll say unpack. And what will we be unpacking? Well, we need our color attribute back onto this. We also need our velocity. So we can say transfer attribute CD space V. And there you have it. Now you're bringing both of those in and you can just add a ground plane, a grid of some sort and set up your lighting and cameras and you can render this out. Everything has velocity already, but you don't need to add it. And of course you can cache this out so it's not so slow. You can cache out at any point. Perhaps you want to cache out at the end here. To do that, you can drop a file cache node. Find a place where you'd like to save it. So I'll go to this D drive Rubik's cube, create a new folder, call it tutorial cache. Call this confetti dot dollar ff or dollar f dot bgeo dot sc. And the frames that we would like to save, we just like to save maybe 200 frames. And then you can say save to disk, and after that you can load it from disk. There you have it, that's how you create this dancing confetti cube effect. So we've gone over the self-solving Rubik's cube, we've gone over the cube dynamics, and we've gone over the confetti dynamics. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll get back to them. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like our Facebook page. We have a lot of interesting things coming up, so stay tuned for that.